Now, if you guys have learned the basic of the Python language, you've done those Hello World applications, and you're now ready to move on to some more intermediate programming projects, today's video is for you. I'm going to be showing you five intermediate Python projects that not only are really usable and you can actually deploy into the real world, but also will help you build a skill set and a little bit of a resume for yourself as you start to progress and get better in this programming field. Now, the main goal of this video is to introduce you to a lot of different things that you can do with the Python language because it is almost unlimited once you get past those basics and you kind of learn the syntax and how the language works. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy the video. And before we get into it, just a quick word from our sponsor. Before we get started, I need to give a massive thank you to Linode for sponsoring this video. They make it easy and affordable to host your site or service in the cloud, offering no-nonsense hosting with plans starting at just $5. This means no surprise fees or overages like you might have gotten from some more entry-level hosting companies. Now, Linode also has a full API that works with tools like Terraform and Kubernetes, making it an awesome environment for development projects. Maybe you've used an entry-level hosting service before? Well, Linode is your step up to powerful, fast, and fully configurable cloud computing. Anyways, go ahead and sign up with the link below and take advantage of a free $20 credit using the code TWT19. So the first kind of project I recommend to intermediates is building a website using Python. Now this is going to involve you learning one of two modules usually, which is either Django or Flask. Now these can be complicated modules, but to learn them would probably take you a few hours and you'll be able to create a full website using almost entirely Python. Now there is some HTML that you might have to learn and write to actually display the web page, but if you know Python, this language is super easy to pick up. You can do it in about five or 10 minutes. And being able to create a website with Python is very powerful. A module like Django is actually used by applications like Instagram and Tinder, and people are hiring Django developers consistently. So getting started with this technology as an intermediate is a great idea, and you might just find that you really like doing this. So so that's why I'm recommending it to you here. You can even try to create, you know, a resume website for yourself. If you're thinking of something simple, just a one pager that kind of goes through, you know, maybe some of your skills, some things that you've done. And that's a great way to get started. Another thing you can do is try to turn one of your text based applications into a Django website, where essentially all you do is you take that kind of back end you've created, you bring it into Django, and then you display it nicely on a web based application. Now, the second project I recommend for intermediates is building some kind of web scraper. Now, essentially what a web scraper is, is just grabbing information from a website or some kind of web page, doing something with it, maybe displaying it in a nice way or manipulating information, whatever it is that you want to do. Now, a module that you can use to actually do web scraping and grab the information from a website is called Beautiful Soup. It's very easy to learn. It's super simple and there's tons of tutorials on it online. There's also some other web scraper modules out there that I'm sure you guys know and would work fine. And I'd love to hear them in the comments down below if you want to recommend those to anyone. But essentially some project ideas I've seen floating around on YouTube is something like creating a web scraper to keep track of Amazon prices. So maybe to alert you when an item that you're looking for goes below market value. Um, similar with stocks, people will keep track of stock prices and maybe do some kind of analysis on that. You can do something simple, just like downloading all of your tweets and seeing, you know, how long is your average tweet, whatever it is that you want to do, you can probably do it with a web scraper. And I'm sure you guys can get creative here and think of some cool ideas that you can do. The nice thing with this is it usually doesn't take very long to make these projects and you can kind of bang out a few of them in a few hours. Um, and it's nice to kind of see how these work and just experiment with web scraping in general. Now my next entry on this list is creating a game using Pygame. Now Pygame is a 2D graphics library in Python that allows you to create games um, that are usually pretty simple. Now I've created all kinds of games using this module so I'm a little bit biased here when I tell you about this but I've made things like Tetris, Snake, Flap bird, a mini golf game. I've created all kinds of just graphical user interfaces and I actually use it to do very basic data visualization or to print out, you know, some models um, or physics simulations and stuff like that. Now, this is a great module. If you're looking for something to fun to do, maybe you want to take a weekend and build a game, um, then I definitely recommend it. And I actually have some tutorials on my channel using Pygame and some full guides on how to create things like Flappy Bird um, with the module Pygame. Now, if you're not really interested in creating a game. This is also good to learn because you can just do some basic drawing and if you want to do some physics simulations or some things with Python then you can definitely use Pygame to do it and you don't have to get into OpenGL and all of that stuff. Now the next kind of projects I recommend are building a GUI which stands for graphical user interface using the module tkinter or pyqt5. Now if you're serious about GUIs 
just go right into PyQt5 because it's a more powerful framework, but Dekinder is a little bit easier to learn uh, and you can still create some applications with that. But anyways, if you're stuck on what kind of GUI to build, what I usually recommend is taking some of your text-based applications. So maybe you've done a login system, maybe you've done something that keeps track of inventory or keeps track of your expenses and turning that into a GUI. Now this is great because it makes you think about some of the different aspects that you need for the user. Like maybe you need a submit button, maybe you need some way to enter information. And then once you start doing this, you can even start looking into something like databases to keep track of information. Now, if you're thinking for some just quick ideas for GUIs, what I usually recommend is login system. I know this isn't going to be secure with hashing and all that, but just to kind of test out the waters and see how to do something like that, as well as something that keeps track of your expenses, maybe a to-do list. There's all kinds of things that you can do, and those are some pretty quick ideas, and you can probably learn how to use this module in just a few hours. All right, so my last kind of project idea is doing something with robotics or with Raspberry Pis. Now, I've had my fair share of Raspberry Pis. I think I've had three of them now, and it's always something fun to sit down with on a weekend or for a few hours and mess with some wiring and some electronics. Now, some people don't don't like this they don't like messing with breadboards which is what I have right here but I think it's fun and once in a while it's nice to kind of get into see some physical applications that can be run with Python now if you don't know Raspberry Pi runs its own operating system you can pick these up for like $35 and it mainly uses Python to program on it has all these pins that are connected to this kind of black jumper wire here uh, what you can do is you can trigger them with Python code to turn on like LEDs to connect to sensors do all kinds of stuff and some projects that I've done with this is create like little safes where you know you have to type in a pin code or you have to uh, on the computer and then it'll open up the safe. I've done a security system where it runs facial recognition to open up the door. That's a little bit more advanced but just to give you an idea. People create robots with them, they create drones, there's all kinds of stuff you can do and if you're into electronics then picking up one of these is definitely a good investment and you'll definitely get your money's worth out of it. Now to wrap up this video, I wanna quickly say that it's super important that you guys are working on projects. I know you guys have watched this video to get some inspiration and I hope I've given that to you, but something that's gonna set you apart from other programmers is being able to work on projects independently. A lot of people don't do this, they just follow through on tutorials and do slight tweaks to them. But what I always recommend is get the knowledge from the tutorials and then go off and try to do something on your own. So with that being said, I hope you guys got some projects ideas here. I'd love to hear what you've worked on in the comments down below and if you enjoyed the video please make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to see other kind of projects that I'm going to be working on in the future. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in another YouTube